What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, talking today about the Tomb Raider Remastered Trilogy because I am completely in love with it. I feel like this is a collection that definitely needed to come back. Over the course of the last couple years, we've definitely seen the rise of the remasters. We've seen these old school collections of 90s and early 2000s games getting repackaged, repainted, and re-released. And during the course of that, I kept asking, where the heck is Tomb Raider? These are games that not just were influential, but still, in my opinion, definitely hold up. They're very goofy and weird. We're playing as a lady named Lara Croft, who's a mega millionaire, delving into the depths of bizarre abandoned ancient societies and finding magical relics and stuff. Each game in the original trilogy is just so funky in the best way possible. And now they've made them even better. Let's dive into what makes these games really good, what makes this collection definitely worth the price, and my minor gripes at some of the technical issues I experienced. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already, but let's begin with what exactly is the Tomb Raider Remastered Trilogy. This is the first three Tomb Raider games. These originally came out in 1996, 1997, and 1998, and you're probably asking, okay, that's pretty ancient, but why do they look so good? These games have been completely rebuilt from the ground up. Now, this is technically just like a graphical overlay, but it's hundreds, literally hundreds of tiny changes. I feel like the very best remasters are the games that you're not just instantly aware of what you're seeing. What I mean by that is that it looks the way you remember it as a kid. Your nostalgia goggles of a boulder chasing you down a hill or dodging traps or big blazing infernos as you're trying to sprint through a volcano. That stuff looked good when you were a kid. This remaster matches your memories, and they do this in a bunch of very subtle ways. Stuff like bosses now have health bars, so you can tell how many bullets left are needed to actually kill them. You can save anywhere now instead of just doing it on specific checkpoints or having to repeat entire chapters of the game when you die an unfair death. They've done things like all the sprites. Oftentimes when you're picking up a particular object on the ground, it was technically a 2D asset. It was just like a piece of paper you'd pick up and then it appear in your inventory. They've now made from scratch tons of 3D models for all the different things we pick up. Even if it's just ammunition or health packs, they're all fully 3D done actual models now that look good. Here's the part of the game, though, that's definitely the best, which is that every texture, every wall, bookcases, just random ivy, and obviously the monsters themselves that we're dodging, like wolves and tigers and weird cracked out goons in Venice. Like everything has been visually redone. And in my opinion, it looks dramatically better. Now, what's extra cool about this is that if for some reason you want to see how dramatic these graphical overhauls have been, you can just easily toggle back and forth to the original graphics and the new graphics very seamlessly. And this brings me to my primary complaint. I really only have one big complaint and one small complaint, but this is my big complaint. They did a lot of different stuff with the lighting in this remaster. It feels like they decided to go in and try and recreate a lot of the different scenes, obviously, but a lot of times they tried to make stuff darker and spookier, more stuff lit by candlelight or by torches, and some stuff is just entirely different. I found myself in a lot of different areas toggling back and forth to see if retro graphics or modern graphics is actually better lit. If I'm trying to land a difficult platforming section or I'm looking for a keyhole in a cave or something like that, I want whatever is best lit. And there is no lighting option. You can't just go into a settings menu and boost the brightness. 
there is no brightness setting. So there were definitely chunks of this game that were incredibly dark. Now, I definitely checked my TV. I think part of this is sometimes when I record gameplay, it gets darkened slightly. But there are parts of this that are definitely way too dark. And this also brings me over to the control problem I encountered at times. So they decided to entirely remake how the controls work as well. You can play the original version, which they call tank controls, which if you haven't played old school Tomb Raider, it controlled like Resident Evil. Forward makes you run forward, left makes you turn left. It's very easy, but also very difficult at the same time. Having a jump button, a grab button, a tiptoe button, so you could very carefully walk up to the edge of something before your big dramatic leap. The original controls worked good, but they decided to invent an entirely new control style called Modern. Now, I did enjoy this about 95% of the time, but it definitely feels like it has some limitations during these scripted events. Modern makes it so that whatever direction you decide to aim the stick is where Laura walks. So left will always be run left, right will always be run right. It, it makes it very easy in combat specifically to just duck out of the way or get out of you know really hazardous situations. The issue is that in certain circumstances, like trying to outrun a boulder or dodging some spike traps, it is weird when the game is trying to drag you in a certain direction visually in the original controls that meant you would just keep holding forward and you'd run in the right direction. But with modern controls, since it's oriented on how the camera is facing, I did die a couple deaths getting yanked in a way I didn't want to go. Now, thankfully, there is the ability to save anywhere. So I just basically constantly spammed the save button throughout the entire game. All three of these I saved constantly. But it is weird that there are just some technical limitations to how modern controls work, especially because they tried to give us a right stick to control the camera, something that wasn't really in the original game, at least not in my memories of it. And so being able to move the camera, it works pretty well when you're on land, but when you're scuba diving or swimming through stuff, I definitely noticed that the camera has the ability to get stuck on stuff. I did drown only twice, but there were two situations where I straight up could not swim in the direction I was trying to go because modern controls, once again, are oriented via camera and I'd end up drowning because it just wasn't aiming the way I needed to go to go catch a breath of fresh air. I will say though that modern controls they feel incredibly responsive. For a new invention retroactively input into an old school game, they're actually pretty dang smooth. I purposely ran a lot of the obstacle courses and they worked incredibly good. I even did stuff like got the, uh, the, the super secret ATV track. There's 200 trophies in this. I did pop a lot of trophies during this because I am a trophy hunter. I gotta say, I think this is a really cool package. Not only is this the entirety of Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3, but it includes the expansions that they made later on. I think these were part of Tomb Raider Gold collection on Dreamcast. Tip of the hat to, of course, the best console ever. So that means you get Unfinished Business, Golden Mask, and The Lost Artifact. These are extra expansions that are a couple hours each. This is just a very, very big package, just literally taking a step back and looking at it this is definitely something that any fan of 90s games especially if you meant to play these back in the day and didn't get a chance these are definitely worth your time i do think i should put a little like buyer beware because if you're not somebody that's already accustomed to this style of like clunky retro goodness I think that if you have not played a lot of video games, if you don't have hundreds of games under your belt already, I do think that this game is going to be very vague and obtuse. There is a lot of weird backtracking. There is a lot of not very logic-based puzzles, and the controls themselves are not incredibly responsive at times. That's not necessarily me trying to bag on the game itself because, I mean, you know, <laughs> this is a product of its time. It's 20 years old at this point, almost 30 years old. So, you know, there's going to be some uh, 
very retro trains of thought that exist in the processes of this game. But, you know, I still think I have such a soft spot for it. It's cool to see these games coming back, even if some of the added features aren't that dramatic. I'm just happy that they're here again. It's cool to see the new character models. It's cool to just go through a lot of the old areas I loved most, like racing boats or driving jet skis, getting unlockables, finding extra shotgun shells. It's just straight up old school Tomb Raider, but back and a little bit more beautiful. The only part of this game I didn't get a chance to experiment with a bunch just because it's not typically my cup of tea is photo mode, but when I did mess with it, it was pretty basic. It's got a couple filters, it's got a couple options. I mean, it's the kind of thing that I feel like it's neat and it's good for sort of taking screenshots, but I don't think anybody's going to be doing like Laura Croft video game photography the way that people do in other games like No Man's Sky or Fallout or GTA. Overall though, I had a very good time, so let's go over to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving the Tomb Raider Remastered Collection a 9 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching gamers. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like subscribe if you haven't already and please keep dreaming all right on to the next review man this time of the year it, it's crammed but i love it thanks to everybody who supports this and thanks to uh, honestly the developers for giving me this game so early i've had this game for weeks and i've been playing it for weeks <laughs> pretty heavily Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.